AMD's 7 nanometer is just around the corner and we are going to be reporting on it at CES. Though what should we expect as tech hungry consumers? Well today we discuss the good, the bad and what comes after the long awaited 7 nanometer. Yesterday there was sun and there was rain. Welcome back to the Yes of Tech City. We'll start with what to look forward to in Ryzen 2. That 3000 series, you'll hear silicon manufacturers talking about the magical efficiency. What does this mean for us enthusiasts? Well, mostly it means lower operating voltages and all the traits associated with lower voltage. The most obvious being lower power consumption, which will save you both power and subsequently energy that doesn't need to be wasted in heat. TSMC, the manufacturer known for supplying Qualcomm, Nvidia and AMD has stated that they expect 7 nanometer to yield a 40% drop in power usage compared to their own 10 nanometer design. Another advantage to smaller 7 nanometer transistors is being able to fit more of them in a package of the same size or simply condense the chip. This will allow more space for batteries in mobile applications or more processing power in the same size outfit for desktop power users, for example. So speed, lower voltage and a smaller footprint. What's not to like about this? Well, on the consumption side, everything is straightforward and seems good. However, when it comes to the manufacturing side, there are far more repercussions involved in the process itself. Firstly, before the product even goes to market, there is a huge amount of research and development involved in the design of the wafer. According to Gartner Research Group, the design of the wafer itself, nothing else associated, with a 7 nanometer SOC design costs approximately $271 million. And easily enough, it is these same outlays that will eventually end on the receipt of the consumer indirectly, which is why I'm somewhat skeptical of the rumored $499 US price tag of AMD's upcoming Ryzen 3000 series flagship. I mean, 16 cores and 32 threads of all but nothing but improvements, it does seem a little too good to be true. Though I think what AMD is trying to achieve is market their CPUs as unbeatable value and covering their R&D costs with bulk volume of sales. After all, they have an average margin rate of 39%, and it is growing, which is good to hear, though competitors like Intel and Nvidia, for example, have over 60 and 59% respectively. However, the buck doesn't just stop there with AMD. They also have in the works 7 nanometer Navi GPUs, so it's looking like they will be extracting the absolute maximum value out of that 7 nanometer TSMC node. Though what about the competitor Intel? Well, they are currently on 14 nanometer with their own in-house fabrication, meaning they make the wafers themselves. This has been quite a brick road for them and does point out some of the fallacies involved in chasing too high a clock speed. For instance, their 9900K and previous 8700K chips had no problems achieving 5 gigahertz clock speeds. However, years before that, a 6700K chip, which is based on the same 14 nanometer node, would struggle to reach 4.6 or even 4.7 gigahertz. These improvements in turn can be thanked for what is known as maturation of the process itself. That is, it becomes refined over time. However, it can be a dangerous stepping stone if the said company does not find out ways to deliver performance increases, whether it be through architectural improvements or from a shrink in transistor size itself. Though as you may have already read, Intel has faced some massive delays in 2018 in that their yields, and I use that plurally, that is the chips that meet the effective quota for being usable in products and all the effective clock speeds obtainable have been poor and essentially caused massive delays moving forward. Though this is not the first time we have seen this from Intel. If you remember the Broadwell 14 nanometer i7-5775, for example, or you may not have remembered it since it didn't last long on the shelves at all and quite frankly it just got silently hushed to market, had very little gains in terms of IPC and architectural improvements over its predecessor, Haswell. Broadwell had much lower clock speeds, which made it effectively, that is, if it were to be pushed as the next big thing, been a slower product than the i7-4770K, for example. This is generally not how tech companies want to do business, and hence after that, Intel began on Skylake, 
which at the core is essentially the same thing as 2018's Coffee Lake. So what's next? I don't mean Zen 2 Plus XS Pro Ultimate Edition, I mean what comes after TSMC's 7 nanometer and Intel's 10 nanometer. The next planned lithography is 5 nanometer from TSMC, but some chip manufacturers are attempting 4, 6, and even 3 nanometer. However, there is a point where the laws of physics start to fail around the pure micro scale of architecture. Think I'm joking? Well, unfortunately, I'm not. There's a phenomenon with FinFETs smaller than 7 nanometer called quantum tunneling, where particles pass through barriers due to them being too minuscule to contain it, also known on a larger scale as static leakage. But when on the smaller scale, it can be the difference between a correct calculation and a BSOD. So how can this be overcome to continue lithography progression? Well, Samsung has been working on a technique for their upcoming 7 nanometer processors called EUV, or Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography. TSMC and Global Foundries won't be switching to EUV until the second generation 7 nanometer processors. However, this ultraviolet technique is apparently the only possibility of progressing past 6 nanometer and into the realm of beyond. Quite scary when you think of it because AMD's next 7 nanometer Ryzen chips might just be the holy grail for a long time to come. After that, there is a possibility of problems, especially on high performance desktop parts, where arguably manufacturers would face the most problems. So years ago, some experts predicted that 5 nanometer would be the end of Moore's Law, and as we approach this barrier, it seems those experts acquired those titles rightfully so. However, lastly, there is hope for us all as tech enthusiasts, and that is IBM's graphene technology, which is making progress, and if it does eventually hit the market, then it promises to be revolutionary in the processing power it contains. Anyway guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think of 7 nanometer, 5 nanometer, and the future going forward with desktop enthusiast parts. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to slap that like button for us, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.